I've been so busy making updates for y'all that I actually forgot to make my overview and opinions of the whole Raptera ride. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to talk about the pros of this coaster and also the cons. I'm going to be going all the way into it. So yes, there's going to be a definite rant coming. You can best believe that, especially now that I see what Canada's Wonderland has got. <laughs> now, obviously we saw what got pretty much leaked uh, the day before. And shout out to Canada's Wonderland for actually not having really the official leak or anything come out. We knew that it was going to be like a premiere rise, but we didn't know really the name or anything. So good job and kudos to the uh, team at Canada's Wonderland for hiding that. Let's go ahead and talk about the good. The model of this is a launch b and wing coaster, Bulliger and Mabillard. The height of this is actually going to be 145 feet, but I did think about it. If you're sitting on the left side, when you're at the highest point, technically you're going to be 150 feet in the air, which is kind of dope. So that is pretty cool that you'd be that high in the air. Max speed of 65 miles per hour, three inversions, dive loop, flat spin, corkscrew, and a 360 rafter roll. The length of this ride is going to be 3,086 feet with a duration of 89 seconds. Don't know why they said seconds instead of minutes because essentially it's like a minute and 45 seconds. Don't quote me on that. I don't think that's right, but I think it's close. It's gonna have two trains and it sits 20 riders per train. Now I will say this is a great addition for Kings of Men because we don't have any other launch wing honestly in this country. So it is really dope having a launch wing closer to me. Thunderbird at Holiday World, I still haven't ridden that. In fact, I'll probably I've ridden Raptera before I ride Thunderbird. It's gonna be really dope to have a launch wing closer to a lot of people because this park is way easier to get to than Holiday World, that's for sure. It's a nice length coaster, that's for sure. We'll get into that a little bit later, but yeah, I think the length is decent for what they for what they were going for. I like that the launch doesn't lead right into an inversion. You kind of shoot up, and then after that, you go into the first inversion. The S turn is gonna be a unique type of element as well. I'm curious as to how that's gonna feel on a wing coaster. I did ride Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. I personally love that coaster. I think it's one of my favorite rides at Cedar Point. I know a lot of people are just like, it's really meh, but I am a big fan of it. So I'm very excited for this wing coaster uh, just from riding Gatekeeper, definitely excited. Has a decent speed as well at 65 miles per hour. It's pretty much the same speed as pretty much Dominator. I do like what they're trying to do with the theming. Uh, I like the little columns when you're launching out of the station. That's gonna be really dope. As well as just the station in general, I think that's gonna look cool. Q line looks really dope. I think the Q line actually looks almost better than the station, to be honest, from the render. There's gonna be a lot of areas where you can just get a bunch of photos of this coaster. It's gonna be really cool seeing it fly right over your head. That's pretty much the good. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the bad. Just to list off a couple of things before we get into really the ugly part of this. This isn't a real volcano replacement. So I don't want you all to think that this is a proper volcano replacement because it's not. It's a new addition to King's Dominion that just also happens to be on Volcano's plot of land. It's going to be kind of confusing for the general public to be like, which green coaster are we riding? Because why would you put two green coasters right beside each other? On top of that, they're actually really similar rides when you think about that. No other park in the chain in this now Six Flags chain has done this where there's a wing coaster and a 40 free spin right beside each other. The other bad thing is that I don't think they're going to be having restrooms in this area. Uh, I didn't hear anything about a new restroom coming to this area unless they're going to announce that for the 50th anniversary, which hopefully they do. There's no rest area by Intimidator Project 305 or Flight of Fear and then now Rep Terror. That means you're going to have to walk all the way to the front of Jungle X just to go to the restroom, which is kind of wild. It is technically the tallest and longest wing coaster or launch wing coaster but they only made it the longest by like, I think it only beats that record by like 40 or 50 feet, which is kind of wild. It's like, y'all just were able to say this is the longest coaster. This leads me to the ugly, the rant. <laughs> yes, I'm really about to go in on this because Kings Dominion, what in the world? 
after seeing Alpen Fury at Kanda's Wonderland, they could have rebuilt not even the entire volcano structure. You could have just made a smaller volcano structure at maybe like 160 feet. Then had you shoot out of the volcano, I really wish the speed of this wasn't 65. I wish it was like 75. I think 75 is really what this coaster should have been. The length of this ride, I wish this coaster had a went like near Anaconda. Like that's how long this coaster could have been. Like I said, this was never actually a volcano replacement. This is a coaster that ended up being on a volcano plot of land. What a lot of people don't realize is that this coaster would have never really happened. If Volcano never had those major issues in 2018 that they found out about, the next coaster was actually gonna be over in Old Virginia. And I said this in a video a long time ago, you'd have to look for it. I don't even remember where it was at. I'm almost 100% sure if Volcano didn't get removed, the next area of the park that they were gonna work on was literally gonna be Old Virginia because that was the only area of the park that didn't have something new. But I just remember saying that the next coaster had to go in Old Virginia. So now that coaster in Old Virginia is actually gonna be pushed back to probably like 2027, 2028. And if you don't believe me, go over and look at where the go-karts are at. It's boarded up. It's actually a really big plot of land that people don't know about because Dinosaurs Alive used to be back there. So Old Virginia really is old at this point. Like they don't really have anything over there. They kind of use that area for people to kind of relax at. They play a slower rhythm music. And the only thing really over there is Grizzly and some Flying Eagles ride that they're probably gonna retheme when they get that new coaster. So like I said, there's a lot gonna be happening to this park within the next five years, I wanna say. Definitely within the next five years, there's gonna be a huge shift. So I'm recording this on August 8th, 2024. And when I saw the announcement for Alpen Fury, I just was like, what is happening right now? This is literally what I wanted Volcano to be. Minus Premier, like I said, if this was Vacoma, if that was Vacoma, Oh my goodness, all you I would be you would just be hearing praises from me. I also think they are really playing it safe with the inversions on this ride. I actually saw in the comments uh when I released that Raptera like POV, people were just like, I'm really excited for it. And then the other people who knew it was up, BM was playing it mad safe on this coaster. That S turn should have been a zero G roll. And where in the world are the near miss elements? for this ride. I'm hoping that they're gonna add them and they just didn't have it in the POV. They're going with the same type of theme, but they're not trying to make it a replacement for Volcano. And I think that's what we have to realize at the end of the day. Like I said, if this coaster was longer, faster, don't really care if the height was any taller, but if it was a longer and faster roller coaster with maybe like two more inversions, I think this would be dubbed as the best launch wing roller coaster. The only other one, is that fast, I, th I think it's called like Furious, Bro Furious Baco. I forget where it's at, but that coaster is insanely fast. I didn't even know they had a launch wing that went that fast until like probably a month ago. Also the name, I'm not mad at it, but like Rap Terror. That's all for today's video. I hope you all did enjoy it. Let me know what you all think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'll definitely be down there with you all. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and until next time, peace out.